The first release of Azahar, a new Nintendo 3DS emulator, is out. This emulator is a follow-up of the well-known Citra and Lime 3DS, even coming from the same developers too. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up this emulator and the best settings you can use so you can play 3DS games on PC. At the moment that I'm recording the video, they are now at Release Candidate 3 for the emulator, and the link for this page will be on the description of this video. So you're gonna check whatever it is the latest version available, and then you're gonna click here on Assets to bring up these options. And this video is for Windows PC, so the version you're gonna get is this one right here, Windows MSVC.zip. Go ahead and click on this one to download, and you're gonna drop this file on the desktop of your PC. That emulator file needs to be extracted, and we can do this with 7-zip if you are on Windows 10, but if you are on Windows 11, you can just use the extracting tool from there, it works just fine. But on Windows 10, we need something like 7-zip. The link will be on the description as well, and all you gotta do is just click on this download button to get the file. And you're also going to drop this to the desktop of your PC. Lastly, we're also gonna need Visual C++. The link for this will also be on the description. And on this page, you're gonna download this version here, X64. So just go ahead and click on this link. And you're also going to put this on the desktop of your PC. Now, with all the files on your desktop, we're gonna start with VC++. So go ahead and double click on this icon and it will bring up this window. And there is a chance that you already have Visual C++ on your computer if you played games on it before, that is. And if that's the case, you're gonna see here where it says Modify Installation. So if that's showing up for you, you don't need to install it anymore. You can just close this and move on. But if not, you're gonna see a Next button somewhere down here. So you're just gonna keep clicking here on Next to finish the installation. And when that is done, you can close this window. Now, if you are on Windows 10, we're gonna install 7-zip. So pretty much the same thing. Double click on the 7-z file. It will open this window, and all you gotta do is just click on this install button. Just a few moments, and there you go. 7-zip is installed. Go ahead and click on close. And now your icons should look like the ones that I have here. At this point, you can go ahead and delete VC++ and 7-zip. We're not gonna need this anymore. Now we only have the actual emulator file. So what you're gonna do here is click on this file with the right button on your mouse to bring up these options. And then you're gonna click on 7-zip or the extracting tool of Windows 11. Then you're gonna click on this option, extract here. All the files will be inside a folder so you can just use this option. And there you go, the emulator folder right here. At this point, delete the original zip file, we're not gonna need that anymore. Now you just have to double click on this folder to open, and inside you will see all the emulator files. And to start the emulator, you just have to double click on this application file right here. So go ahead and double click on this one, and as such, the emulator will start. This would be a good time to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video. The first thing you're gonna see here is this folder and saying double click to add a new folder to the application. That is the location on your PC where the 3DS games are going to be. And this can be anywhere on your PC, but what I like to do here is go back to the emulator folder and I just create a separate folder just for the games. And to do that, you're gonna right click anywhere on this folder. I'm gonna select new and then select folder and you can name this whatever you want. I'm just gonna call this games and this is where they're going to be. So now you're gonna go back to the emulator and you can just double click here on the middle and it will bring up this window. So now you just select the games folder or the location where the games are going to be and then click on select folder and then you should see the location inside the emulator now. But I don't have any games inside that folder yet, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Go back to the games folder, and I'm just going to drop some games that I have here with me. 
I had these games ever since the Lime 3DS emulator and they are on the Dot 3DS format. But on this new emulator, this format will not work, but the solution for this is very simple. I'm gonna use Monster Hunter as an example. So what you're gonna do is on your game, you're gonna click on it with the right button on your mouse, and then you're gonna select the rename option. Now, when it's like this, you're gonna click on the end of it and you're going to replace the 3DS with CCI and then you're gonna press enter. This window will show up, click on yes, and then it will change the format of your game. So now if I go back to the emulator, you see that only Monster Hunter is showing up here. The other games on the 3DS are not. I selected CCI as an example, but there are other formats that the emulator supports as well. I'm putting a brief explanation on the screen right now, and this is going to depend on the source of where you got the games. That is, if you sailed the seven seas before, that is, Google is your friend, right? That sort of thing. Or if you got your games from a copy that you own. But since the Dot 3DS format was a very popular one back on Citra and Lime 3DS, it is the one that I'm showing on video. Now let's go through the emulator settings and what you can change here to get the best performance and quality in your games. You can change the settings here to apply to all the games you have, or you can set game specific settings. To do that, you're gonna right click your game and then you're gonna select properties. And on this window, you're gonna see all the settings that I'm about to show you, but they're only going to be applied to this one game, which can be useful for games that need some extra tweaking to get the best out of it. But anyway, here on the emulator, you're gonna click on emulation and then select the configure option. In the general part, the settings here are more personal, like the region of the emulator. You can also change the UI as well. So this one here is going to be up to you. The same goes for the system settings as well. If you want to change the username on the emulator, the language, stuff like that, this is where you can change it. Now on the graphics tab, this is where we're going to change stuff. Under the enhancements tab, the first option is the internal resolution of the emulator. But the higher the resolution, the more it's going to require of your PC. So what you can do here, not only for this setting, but for all the other ones that I'm about to show you, is that you can start the game by double clicking on it. And with the game running, you can access these configurations again and then you can increase the resolution as the game is running. So you can see if your PC is handling that resolution. For the remaining settings here, you can keep them as it is. You don't have to change anything. But if the performance of your game is not okay, one setting you can change here is this one. Disable right eye rendering. This is a new setting on this emulator. And this can greatly improve performance if your PC isn't that good. But in my case, for the settings that I have, I'm gonna keep this one turned off. Now let's move over to the layout settings. And the only setting I want to show you here is this one, the screen layout. The default setting is very similar to a actual 3DS on what we are used to see. But you can also change that if you want. And I'm going to show you right now what each one of them look like. So you can select the one you want. Again, this is another setting that you can see changing it in real time with the game running. So we have the single screen option, large screen, side by side, separate windows, hybrid screen, and also a custom layout in which you can set the position of the top and the bottom screen to your liking. Now let's head over to the advanced settings. And on the first option, graphics API, by default, this is set to OpenGL. But if you click here and you see the Vulkan option, go ahead and change to this one. This is a much better option for performance, but not every GPU is supported. If your GPU is a bit old at this point, you're not going to see this option. In this case, you're gonna keep yours at OpenGL. But in case you do have, change it to this one. Now, right below that on physical device, this is the GPU option you want the emulator to select. That is your main GPU in case you have a dual GPU setup. So just click on this one 
and make sure you're using your main GPU. Now on the render settings, it is a good idea to experiment and turn on the async shader compilation setting. This option can help with the compilation stutters that the emulator can have when you're using the Vulkan API, but it's also going to use more of your GPU. So I'm going to recommend to turn all these options and then run the game and see if everything is okay. But if you're noticing some graphical glitches or something like that, that is bothering you, come back here and then turn this option off. And on the advanced tab, you don't have to change anything here with the exception of perhaps the enable vsync option, because this one can introduce a little bit of input lag on the emulator, but turning this off might also introduce the screen tearing on the emulator. That is that vertical line. So I'm just going to keep this one turned on. On the audio settings, you don't have to change anything here unless you know what you're doing. These settings will work just fine. And lastly, we have the controls setting. And on this emulator, you can play with a keyboard or a controller. By default, you have the keyboard controls set here. But if you're going to use a controller, we're going to use the auto map function, which means that the emulator will do all the work of mapping the control buttons for you. And the emulator still supports pretty much all the controllers out there from PlayStation and Xbox and even third party controllers too, if they have the common APIs used out there. So what you're going to do here is if you don't have your controller plugged in, go ahead and do that right now. And once that's plugged in, you're going to click on this auto map button right here. And then you're going to see this window. And like it says here, after you press OK, you're going to need to press any button on your controller for the emulator to do the mapping. And you have about five seconds to do so after you press OK. So just have your controller ready. And now click on OK and just press any button. And there you go. The emulator will change it like that. I'm using a Xbox controller, so you might see different options here depending on the controller you're using. And you can also change individual buttons as well, depending on your liking. You're just going to click on the one you want to change and then press that key. And there you go. You also have dead zone settings for the analog and pretty much everything else on the 3DS. And also by default, you can use your mouse for the motion and touch controls. These options can be found right here. But like I said, it works fine by default. The touch controls, for example, when the game is running, you can just use your mouse and then just click on the options you want to change. So it works out of the box. But if you want to change anything, this is where you can do it right here. Now we're pretty much ready with these settings. So go ahead and click on OK. And we're also ready to start your game. And you can do that by double clicking on your game. Wait a few moments and then the emulator will start. I have many emulation tutorial videos like this on the channel, so if you like what you saw, don't forget to check out my other stuff, subscribe to the channel, and also leave a like on this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.